Hey, Steve here, and in this processing walkthrough, I'll be showing you how to create virtual copies in Lightroom of a single exposure so that we can create faux or pretend bracketed exposures and then blend those together manually in Photoshop. So, this video is the next episode of my processing subscriber images series. If you like this kind of video, then let me know by hitting the thumbs up button to like it, and you can subscribe to my channel to be notified by YouTube every time I publish a new video. So, this image was provided by Wayne Lodwig who was looking for some inspiration in processing the image. He mentioned luminosity masking, dodge and burn, Orton effect, and a couple of other things. And I'm sure that all of these kind of uh, techniques are going to help us create a great outcome from this image. So Wayne only sent me this one exposure, uh, but he did say that he had, had others if I needed them. Uh, but I think I'll just use this one to demonstrate how it's not the end of the world if you didn't capture all the exposures you needed when bracketing. Uh, especially when your camera produces RAW files that the quality of uh, Wayne's D810 does. So before we get started, if you'd like to submit an image for an upcoming episode, then click the link in the description to do that. Now I can't promise to create a video for every image I receive, but I do pick the ones that have the best potential for a great shareable tutorial, like this one. So finally, before we start, if you want to download my luminosity masking panel that I'm going to use in this demo, then you can click the link in the description below the video. So here we are with Wayne's image loaded in Lightroom. Now, my first instinct when I saw this was, you know, where, where are the rest of the exposures? Uh, because this obviously, as you can see, is really, really dark. But here's how I knew that I would be able to use this um, as a single exposure and then just sort of do some uh, manual blending using this uh, exposure as the only source. Uh, so just in the develop module in Lightroom, just pushing this exposure all the way up here, like we've got all of this detail in the foreground, which just was completely hidden here in this exposure. And at a plus four, um, at a plus four stops on this exposure slider. You zoom in here and like, yeah, the, uh, the noise and you know low light noise and whatnot is well for anyone who uses Nikon uh, D810 or a similar camera you don't need me to tell you but for me as a Canon user this is really impressive to me how much detail and how little noise there is in this uh, foreground so here's what we're going to do now we probably don't need to start out quite this dark so I'll just start maybe on a plus one exposure. And now I'm going to create a virtual copy by right clicking and choosing create virtual copy. And that gives me another one here that I can use. Uh, now from here, I'm going to go maybe to plus three. So a two stop increment. And then I'll do the same again with this, uh, where is it? Create virtual copy. And three of three, so let's go to probably, well, plus four and a half, that'll do. So what I will do actually, I mean, it's good practice, um, even if you've got a really high quality raw file like this, um, I'll just, you know, the more detail that I've pulled out, so the brighter the exposure, I'll probably just uh, add a bit of noise reduction to these ones here, so. I mean, that looks pretty, pretty damn good. Um, let's maybe add a bit more sharpening. Okay, so around 60 on sharpening, 30 on noise reduction. Let's do the same thing to the second exposure. And because this dark exposure here, we're not gonna be using any of the foreground. Uh, don't need to worry about any of that. Uh, so let's get these into Photoshop. So I'm going to shift click to highlight all of them and right click and edit and open as layers in Photoshop. And when my computer gets around to it, it's going to load each of those as a separate layer in Photoshop. And there we go. So what I'm just going to do is rearrange these layers so that my middle exposure is at the top. And then I'll kind of, well, depends. <laughs> if you ask me on a different day, I may do this a different way around. But, you know, for this, I'll probably start with the middle exposure and then blend 
the sky in from the dark exposure and then blend a bit of the foreground in from the brighter exposure. So starting from the middle and then blending um, either side of middle. Um, you know, if, if I've got like five exposures that I'm blending in, uh, then you know I'll probably start at either the highlights or the shadows and blend in, you know, getting progressively brighter or darker. But I think when you've got three, this is a great way to go. So, um, all right, let's put that uh, dark exposure back at the top now, actually, and then add a black layer mask to it. So Alt or Option click on Add Layer Mask button. And let's just see how much of this are we going to want to bring through? Probably not too much. Um, I don't want the clouds to be too dark. So I'm just going to mask like the sort of the brightest highlights, really. So I'll turn the previews on on my luminosity masking panel. And let's try a two on the highlights there. Uh, the clouds probably aren't quite isolated enough yet, so let's try a three. So if you're not familiar with my luminosity masking panel, then you know this is essentially just shortcutting all of the long manual luminosity masking processes that you would do if you're using luminosity masking. Um, and you, you would do that via the channels panel normally. Um, but this panel here I just created. Uh, you can download it at luminositymaskingpanel.com, but I created it just to basically shortcut all the lengthy uh, processes required when doing luminosity masking the manual way. Uh, so yeah, this, this selection looks like it will do a good job of letting us brush through into the brighter parts of the sky without brushing the clouds in too much. So I'm going to click Use Mask, and that will load the preview into a selection. I'll hit Command or Control H to hide the selection now so I can see what I'm doing. Switch to a white foreground in my brush tool. Increase the brush size. And in the layer mask, I'm just going to gradually brush through into the brighter parts of the sky here. All right, already that's getting a bit too much here in the top left. I think I'll probably undo that. And just really concentrate on the middle section here. Just a couple of light touches on the brush. So let's look at the effect of that. Okay, let's go right down to 10% and just kind of try and brush through to get a bit more, you know, recover a few more of those highlights in those pink clouds in the middle. And that's probably enough. Like if I over blend this, then we're going to lose any contrast between the sky and the clouds just in this section here. Yeah, so let's leave it there. Now let's bring the bright exposure into play. So let's drag this to the top and command or uh, sorry, alt or option click on the add layer mask icon to add a black layer mask. So what I'll do here is probably I'm just going to brush it in you know, in the grass here and leave out the uh, surrounding sand and concrete over here. So I'm not sure if a luminosity mask is going to give that to me. Let's have a look at a couple of previews that are isolating the shadows. Okay, try five here. See, no, they're not really going to give us the isolation we want. So cancel that. And that's because even though that's obviously a much uh, different sort of subject compared to the concrete and the sand, they appear to be a similar brightness level. So that's why a luminosity mask or a luminosity selection isn't going to be able to isolate them as well. Uh, let's try a color range selection. So I'm just going to reset most of this. Let's click on the greens. And let's see. OK, this is the best preview here. So. Yeah, just clicking on the greens, even still, it's uh, still bringing in a lot of that uh, concrete and sand. So I'm just going to reduce the fuzziness. So the fuzziness slider, the higher you have it, um, the more of a selection it's going to select outside of that source pixel that you click on with the eyedropper. So if you want it to be um, isolating or selecting 
only the exact precise green of that pixel that you click on, you would have your fuzziness right down low. But you know, the more you push this up here, the more it's going to start letting in different shades of green and then you know, other colors too, the further you push the uh, slider. So let's keep it here for now. So we're still isolating mainly the green. Uh, but now I'm going to choose the eyedropper tool with a plus symbol next to it so that I can add to this selection. So just clicking around other colors in here. Unfortunately, the sand is getting included here. So I'll click the minus and I'll just click on the sand over there. All right, this might be a good enough selection to use. So, all right, let's click OK. And now Command H to hide the marching ants. Let's grab a white foreground color. Let's just start brushing, making sure that I click on the mask. Okay, this is looking a bit dodgy. And the reason is, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of brushing in some, but not all. Do you know what I think I might do? I'm just gonna delete that entire mask and deselect that color range selection that I just loaded. And I'm gonna do this just manually with a brush without any, uh, without any selections active. So that's probably gonna be the best thing to do here. So yeah, that's a much more natural uh, look to these, uh, to these grasses. I won't go all the way to the edge though. Well, the edge is the only thing that's going to give me a problem because I don't want to go over into the sand and create halos. But I think because it's a bit like, you know, it's not exactly a uniform shape or anything. I can kind of get away with doing the manual brush strokes. All right, that's, that's better. That's much better than what I had before. Okay. So this is a good starting point. Now from here, maybe we can think about the, uh, the colors. Um, I might, well, probably just going to have to try a few different things because I'm not quite sure how, you know, how this is going to look when I start adjusting things. So let's try pushing the reds up a little bit, maybe down. Okay. So I'm just, just playing with this red curve here and just looking at what it does to the image. So this looks good in the sky, but not, not really in the foreground. Um, Let's see what happens if I pull some greens out. Okay, that's, that actually feels a bit more natural now. So what I'm looking for is, uh, because it's really difficult to kind of see by eye if there's like a color cast that shouldn't be there. And it's only when you start tweaking these, um, you know, these color channels and then disabling your adjustment and then toggling between the two. It's only then when you sort of see if there was something that was there that shouldn't be. So I think removing that green actually looks pretty good all around the image. See if there's anything in the blue channel that helps us. Probably not. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So it's a quick color adjustment. We may come back to the colors in a short while because I'll probably warm up the image as well using my warming filter. Uh, but from this point, so assuming these are the colors that we're happy with, we can start adding some contrast to the image. Um, so let's try a levels adjustment. And we're gonna have to be really careful in the sky. We probably have to process the sky and the foreground independently. Uh, so let's just look at what this does in the foreground first. Okay, that's actually it's quite nice. That's quite a good amount of uh, contrast there in the foreground. So let's invert the mask. And then again, with a white brush, let's just brush this effect in subtly and gradually. Just bring in some attention to this rock down here, which is quite a good focal point. Okay. 
Okay, that's pretty decent. Uh, let's see if we can do something for the sky. I might just try a curves adjustment and then darken the sky a little bit. Okay. That's all right. So, uh, let's, are we going to mask this in or out? Let's mask it in. So I'll invert the mask, grab the white brush again. I'm just going to brush across here. And because the horizon's pretty flat, you know, there's no buildings apart from these cranes over here. There's nothing really protruding into the sky. I can reasonably safely just use a brush to brush across here to mask this in. So there's a darkened sky now. And we'll just continue doing the same thing for a couple of more adjustments. Um, let's see, actually, let's use a curves adjustment to, to brighten the foreground even more. And let's invert the mask. And again, let's just bring the brush through the foreground here. This time I'll just run it into the sand and into the concrete a little bit, just so that it's not looking like we're shining a torch on the, uh, on the grass here in the middle. Okay, that's looking all right so far. Let's carry on. Now, let's actually, I'll use my uh, multiply darken method here in the panel. Looks pretty good in the sky again. So let's invert the mask and just brush it into the sky. Don't want to make the sky too dark in comparison to the foreground because that would look unnatural then. Uh, let's see. Just a little bit concerned. These pinks up here are looking a bit too saturated in the top left. Keep my eye on those. Okay. Let's have a look at the histogram. So we're quite a way off the top of the histogram here where the highlights um, would end. So let's have a look. Let's see what happens if we just add a levels adjustment and then bring this highlights or this white point slider towards the left until it meets the end of that histogram there. Now we are clipping those brightest highlights. That's okay. We can repair that though. So I'll, I'll leave that there. And then using a luminosity selection, um, previews on in the luminosity masking panel. I'm going to click the highlights five button. Hopefully that's going to isolate those brightest parts there that are being overexposed. So let's click use mask. And now this time with a black brush, I'll just come back and rub this adjustment out from those areas that are getting overexposed. Okay. That looks pretty good now. So this is the difference with that mask on and off. So we're just recovering the detail in those pinks and just in the brightest parts of that little rock in the foreground. Okay. And that is our uh, levels adjustment in effect. All right. So what's next? Let's try that warming filter that I mentioned a minute ago and a color in the panel. I've just got this warming filter. I'm not quite sure this might, again, this might look better in the highlights. Um, let me just start that again. I'll just delete that and I'll load a selection. That isolates the highlights only use mask. And now with that selection active, if I hit the warm button, it's going to load this into the highlights only. So just wait for a second for it to kick in. Now let's see. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Let's again, let's uh, see if we can double that up, see what it does. Now that probably makes it a bit too warm. Let's revert that and delete that second warming layer. All right, so from here, this is kind of um, 
Oh, I wouldn't say a blank slate, but you know, from here we can go in one of two directions. We can carry on processing it as light as the image is, um, or we can go the other way and process for like a dark overall look. So I have a feeling that Wayne, who uh, whose image this is, he preferred the darker look because he sent me uh, like an example finished image that he had processed and it was on the darker end of the scale. So I think this time we'll follow that route and uh, yeah, and, and go dark. So we can do that in a number of ways. Uh, we can kick it off just with some of these multiply uh, effects here. Wasn't sure, <laughs> wasn't sure what to call it there. So yeah, just again, that's a curves adjustment with no adjustments made to the curve, but just put on the multiply blend mode. That adds a really nice darkening effect. And we can increase the opacity there if we want to make it even darker. I think that's going to add too much saturation though. Uh, so let's be a bit more subtle there. Let's pull that back to about 34%. And you know, when we're, when we're going dark, it's still nice to kind of have a focal point just using, uh, you know, just using light to bring attention to the middle of the shot here. So again, that's darkening most of the image, but not this middle section. Uh, what I can probably do now, let's do the same thing, but this time let's put a, uh, put a mid-tones mask on it. So this time I've just loaded a uh, mid-tones luminosity mask preview here. And okay, let's click use mask. And now with this mid-tone selection active, if I hit that multiply button, it's going to load it uh, with that mid-tones mask in the, uh, in the layer mask. And so that darkening effect hasn't affected those darkest shadows or the brightest highlights as much as it did the first time. So let me, let me just do that same thing again, but without the selection active. So click multiply there. Now you can see this hasn't got the luminosity selection. This is before and this is after. And now what's wrong with this is that the shadows are too black and it's it's looking just, I don't know, it just doesn't look right. Uh, but now with that mid-tone selection active, it's done it in a much more subtle way and it even adds a bit of kind of a matte effect uh, when those shadows haven't been made as dark as they were going to be. So I actually like this. We might need to just focus on these grassy bits over here on the left hand side just to uh, brighten those up again a bit. Let's do it by masking out this original multiply layer. Okay, so this is the effect of both of those darkening effects now, or both of these darkening layers at once. And yeah, that's looking okay. I mean, the colors in the sky are getting a bit, a bit weird. Uh, so maybe we can think about um, a curves adjustment here and seeing what we can do, just putting some of those reds out. Yeah, they've got a long way to go in the sky there. Um, not sure. Really want to go to that level. Um, okay. Well, I guess what might actually look good is just a general desaturation of the image. So let's see if we can just desaturate a bit. Um, do you know what? Maybe, maybe desaturate the sky more than the foreground. So let's bring it down to about here. So minus 25 on the saturation, but then let's mask this effect out. So we're still keeping those nice lush greens in here. That's better. So yeah, really 
don't want this to look like a nuclear explosion. So I think that, that works pretty well there. Now remembering this is still a daytime shot, uh, you know, obviously it's the end of the day. Uh, well, actually, I assume it's the end of the day. It looks like a sort of sunset rather than sunrise, but either way, it's still mostly a daytime kind of shot. So we'd, there's only so dark we can realistically go. But there might just be room for a little bit of an autumn effect in here. Uh, so just deciding whether to apply it to the highlights or the midtones. Let's see what a midtone selection looks like. Okay, let's let's use this. So use mask and let's click the autumn button in the panel. Wait for that to process and do its thing. All right, and now that's that's giving it quite the glow. Uh, and because it's only in the mid-tones, I actually quite like the kind of muted matte effect that it's given the image. Um, but yeah, I think we still... Yeah, I mean, we're getting closer. Uh, let's pull this opacity back a bit. All right. That's, that's getting there. It's getting closer to like a finished image. Um, and... Yeah, I, like I said, I probably don't want to go too much darker than this. Just that little bit of an autumn effect has probably taken it as far as I want to go. Uh, because obviously we've still got daylight sky behind these clouds here. Anything less than this is just going to look uh, a, bit, a bit unrealistic, I think. It's possibly already getting there. Uh, again, I, something I like to do is just zoom all the way out to view the image in a thumbnail kind of size and that helps me gauge, you know, you, sometimes you can see weird effects or weird artifacts um, better in that sort of far away view, uh, like if the sky was too dark or too bright or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, well, I think I probably wouldn't want to take it much further than here from from this point, maybe some dodging and burning just to uh, just to add a bit of shape in here. So let's try that. Um, so I've got just a button in here which shortcuts creating a merged copied layer. Uh, so we can do that. So I've just got this layer here now that I can dodge and burn onto. Let's grab the dodge tool, highlights, and Probably need mid-tones actually. And probably a much lower exposure on the brush there. So I'm just gonna brush around the image here. Just highlighting some of the brighter parts of the grass. Just add a bit of shape. Now I probably don't want to do any burning because it's already dark. Uh, so we kind of do this whole process just using the dodge tool. Um, now I am conscious that over here along this back edge, it kind of looks as if the edge of the grass is too dark. And it probably is because I just used that regular brush when uh, blending the exposures in earlier. Uh, so I wasn't able to get right up close to the edges. So I'll just see if I can do a little bit to kind of repair that with this uh, dodge tool. Otherwise I'd probably have to go in and think of another way to create a selection that really allows me to, um, to brighten up those parts in the distance without brushing over into the sand. All right, let's zoom out again. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe this bit here could be a bit brighter. Okay, have to be really careful when we're using a high exposure value. Um, okay, I think that'll probably do us. So here I'm just, you know, I'm brightening what I need to brighten um, just for just for brightening it up. 
but also using this tool um, to actually highlight some of the brighter parts, adding a bit of a 3D effect. Uh, but you know what? Let's let's actually use the burn tool and just come into some of the shadowy areas here and just darken those. Let's just sort of complete the effect really. So what I'm looking at is darkening what's dark or what I want to take attention away from and creating that 3D effect by darkening the dark edges, brightening the bright edges to, uh, yeah, to make it stand out. Okay, let's grab the dodge tool again here and just brighten this grass on the very edge. Okay, now the thing is, when you toggle the layer off and on, it can look a bit weird. But if it does start to look weird and look like you've just drawn really blatant brush strokes all through the image, then what I recommend is to sort of just leave the screen, go away and then come back 10 minutes later. Leave the dodge and burn layer on and then just look at it and see if it looks weird to you when you come at it with fresh eyes. Um, but yeah, apart from this, I mean, maybe we can do some little tidying up, like cloning some of these little pieces out of the sand, any, any dots that just, you know, like a bit of bird poo on the rock there. Whatever this is in the sand, there's a funny little dot. Maybe get rid of this other photographer who's over here on the horizon. Um, yeah, apart from that, I think in terms of creating like the dark end of the scale uh, version of this image, this is probably uh, this is probably where I would leave it. So yeah, Wayne, I hope uh, that this image or that this walkthrough helped you and anyone else watching. Hopefully, this uh, was a good walkthrough, just to give you some ideas for processing your own images as well. So with that said, thanks for watching. See you next time.